Hey there, friends. Let's look at a few seamless repeating patterns that I'll demonstrate how to make with Inkscape. Here's a repeating pattern of hand-drawn faces. Here's another one with tropical flowers. And this third one is made using words for a motivational message. These types of patterned artwork are often used for practical things, like wallpaper, wrapping paper, curtains, and clothing. There's no seam indicating where the pattern begins and where it ends. We can also apply these to other print-on-demand items, like a coffee cup, the border on a greeting card, and a throw pillow. There are plenty of print-on-demand services to choose from. The one I happen to use is called Zazzle.com. Now, to understand how to make repeating patterns, we first need to take a look at the pattern option in the fill and stroke dialog. So let's draw a rectangle on the page. We're all pretty familiar with the options for the fill. We have no paint, flat color, linear gradient, radial gradient, and mesh gradient. Next is the pattern option that we may not be that familiar with. See how this replaces the flat color with the actual pattern. There are quite a few patterns built into Inkscape that we can use. This top row of tiles shows the last few patterns we've been using. Below that is a drop-down list of the different pattern categories available. Here with the gear icon, we can toggle whether to show the pattern names or not. And we can resize the tiles if we want to. Let's sample a few of the geometrical patterns. We can place another rectangle, which has a fill color, behind the rectangle with the pattern. Notice that part of the pattern is actually transparent. We can select the pattern by clicking it. Then, if we hold down the Alt key, we can select the rectangle below it. The options at the bottom let us modify the pattern's appearance. We can resize the pattern using the Scale X and Scale Y values. This button toggles whether the X and Y values are locked together or not. Here's a quick demonstration of using those features. The orientation values let us rotate the pattern. We can also use the slider below that to do the same thing on a broader level. The offset X and offset Y values move the pattern along the X and the Y axes. Then the gap X and gap Y sliders separate the pattern elements with gaps along the X and the Y axes. The color option lets us change the color of the pattern like this. Sometimes I need to kickstart it by changing the RGB code. Another way to modify the pattern is to use this Edit on Canvas button. This puts three nodes on the canvas. When I hover over the node, the status bar at the bottom explains what it will do. The top left node lets us move the pattern around. The top right circle node lets us rotate the pattern. And the bottom right node lets us scale the pattern. We need to hold the control key if we want the proportions to be kept the same. If you'd like to reposition where the nodes are, just left click in the pattern to move them there. If we go back to the selection tool, another way to get these nodes is to click the nodes tool. Okay, so let's say the built-in patterns aren't enough for us, and we want to build our own pattern. Let's do that now. I'll delete these rectangles so we can start from scratch. The method I'll demonstrate is a simple one that artists use when they're using pen and paper to create repeating patterns. Let's first right-click to bring up the document properties. I'm using a page size of 8 by 8 inches. And in the Guides tab, I want both Show Guides and Lock All Guides to be checked. Now I want to divide the page into four squares by adding some guides. I'll go to Extensions, Document, Guides Creator. We'll need two columns and two rows. Click Apply and close the window. Now let's make that Faces pattern I showed you earlier. I found these hand-drawn faces on Vectizi and imported this set here. For those of you that can actually draw, you might want to draw your own images instead. 
Now the first step is to arrange the items on the page. I'll place a few of them here. Make sure nothing goes outside the edges of the page. OK, here is the completed arrangement I made for this step. Make sure everything is grouped together. Now it's time to make sure the pattern is going to be seamless. We'll effectively cut this page vertically in half and then switch the sides. This will provide connections on the left and the right sides for the images that are split apart. Then we'll do the same thing horizontally to provide connections on the top and the bottom sides. I think I'll call this technique the double switcheroo technique. All right, so now in Inkscape, we're going to clip both the left and the right sides. So let's duplicate these images first with Control D. Also, let's turn snapping on. We're going to snap a rectangle to the left side of the page. Then, Shift select the images, and we're going to use Object, Clip, Set Clip. Now for this left clipped side, we're going to hold down the Control key and slide it straight off to the left. Repeat the same process now for the right side. Now we're ready to switch the sides. Make sure in the Align and Distribute panel that the alignment option is set to the page. Align the right half to the left edge of the page. Then select the left side and align it to the right edge of the page. Group both sides together now before the next step. As you can see, we can start to visualize the connection points on both sides now. Let's apply the same process now to the horizontal halves. I'll speed this up a bit. We'll align the bottom half to the top of the page. Then we'll align the top half to the bottom and left edge of the page. Now that we've rearranged the items, there are likely going to be some open spaces. So we need to fill those up as well. Just make sure not to go outside the page with anything that we place. Here's my finished design for the pattern. The final thing to consider is what color to use. If I use a fill color on the items, I won't be able to change the color once they become a pattern. Let's do that now with red. Let's also make a duplicate to show how to allow the color to be changed. In this case, we need to set the fill color to the question mark here. This is called Unset Paint. It allows the color to be defined later, like when we're using the Pattern Editor. It may look black, but it's really unset. Now all we need to do is use Object, Pattern, Objects to Pattern. I'll do this for both of our designs now. See how our patterns appear in the list of recently used patterns in the Fill dialog. All right, let's make a rectangle to test out our new patterns. I'll give it a fill color of light blue for now. OK, I'll apply the first pattern. I can reduce its size to see the full pattern. However, when I click the Color button a couple of times here, nothing happens. Now let me apply the second pattern. This one will let me change the color. Again, I can use the RGB code if necessary, and then use the color wheel as well. Since we do have transparency in the spaces of the pattern, we probably should create our own background that has a fill color. I'll take care of that now. All right, here are some tropical plant items I downloaded from Vecteezy to use for the second pattern. And here are the items after I arranged them, with some of them overlapping the others. And here is the final pattern after applying the double switcheroo technique and filling in some of the open spaces. Now let's turn this into a pattern as we did before. In this case, I'm going to make our background rectangle first and give it the fill color I'd like. 
Then I can use Control D to duplicate it. Now on the duplicate is where I can apply the pattern and size the pattern as we would like. Now for the third pattern, I wrote three lines of text using different fonts, and I gave an angle to the top two lines. Here's how I arranged them on the page. As you might imagine, there are some open spaces we can already see, and when we apply the double switcheroo technique, there was a big gaping hole in the middle that I needed to fill. I decided to use the same three lines, but this time with no angles on the top two lines. Now before turning this into a pattern, I wanted to show you down here in the lower left that the fill is set to unset, so I should be able to change the color once I turn it into a pattern. Okay, let's turn it into a pattern. And let's draw a new background for it, which we'll make as black. And we'll control D that and select the pattern on top of it. Now I can go ahead and use the color option again. And I know the RGB code that I'd like to use. So let's apply that here. I'll reduce the size so it looks good on the background. And the last thing I want to do is use the Edit on Canvas feature to move the pattern so that the three horizontal lines of text appear in the middle of the background. All right, here's the full page of the pattern, and I think it looks pretty good. Finally now, there is an alternative that you can use because Inkscape does actually provide an option to use a template to create a seamless pattern. You go to File, New from Template, and in the Other tab, there's a facility to create the seamless pattern. This will start a new instance of Inkscape. They'll give you some directions. The smaller box is where you will design your pattern, and the larger box is where the preview will appear. The whole thing will use the Layers and Objects feature that you can find in the right panel. So I encourage you to give that a try and see if you prefer that or if you prefer using my double switcheroo technique. I hope that these three examples spark your creativity so you can start making your own seamless repeating patterns. Okay, repeating patterns are a lot of fun to make, and I hope you enjoy making them as well. If you do start making them, you might find, like I did, that everywhere I go now, I start to see repeating patterns. Amazing. Now, if you're the type of person that sells print-on-demand items, adding repeating items may be the way to go for your products. Thanks a lot for watching. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.